Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.1 RC released today to developers and public beta testers very soon or by the time you're watching this video. iOS 17.1 brings new features and bug fixes, so we'll go over those in a moment, but if you want to jump to any specific point in the video, be sure to check the description for all the chapters. Now along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 17.1 RC, watchOS 10.1 RC, along with all of the other beta updates, even iOS 16.7.2 RC. So those should be available pretty soon. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later. Now this particular update came in at 6.48 gigabytes on my 15 pro max, and it's going to be a big install. Anytime you're going from a beta to what should be the public version, an RC or release candidate, or what used to be called iOS 17.1 GM or golden master is actually the final version released to the public, but they release it to developers soon. There shouldn't be another version unless they find additional issues. So it's going to reinstall the whole OS. And if you're on the developer beta or the public beta, you can turn that off now, but I would probably wait until it's out to make sure we don't have another update before that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about and the build number is two one B seven four. This should be the final build unless they find additional issues. And this says right here, this update includes improvements and bug fixes for your phone. There's actually a lot more than just that, but there is no modem update coming from the last beta of beta three to the RC. Now, as far as what's new, the first thing has to do with text tones. So if we go into sound and haptics, and then maybe we go to ringtones or text tones with iOS 17, we got new text tones and ringtones. They've actually fixed the issue where you couldn't have custom ringtones or custom text tones before, or your purchased ones weren't showing up. That's been resolved and hopefully the volume is fixed for most of you. It seems to be louder for me. So we'll go ahead and play one. And it definitely seems to be a bit louder this time for me. So let me know if it's louder for you in the comments below. Now, Apple has updated airdrop in this version with a feature they promised before. If we go into our airdrop settings, we of course have bringing devices together, but we also have a new option for out of range. We can use cellular data to continue transferring what we've airdropped to a different device if they depart from us or they walk away. So maybe we go ahead and try and send them something. So if I try and airdrop a video to someone, We'll just airdrop it to my other device. It takes a moment. We can accept it. And if we walk away, it will continue over cellular, even if we're not within distance. So that's something that they've updated and brought to iOS 17.1. If you're using the new standby option while you're using your iPhone at night, maybe you have it on a nightstand or on a desk nearby, they've added some additional features for this. So if we go into our standby options, so we'll go back in here, go into settings, go down to standby and under standby, we have some new options here under display within display. We can turn it off automatically after 20 seconds or never, if we want it to stay on all the time on an always on display phone, such as the 15 pro max. So we can have that automatically with motion to wake, but if you want it to stay on all the time, you can do that now with the never option with iOS 17, Apple said we would have a new favorites playlist that would include songs, albums, and playlists. And now they've added it with iOS 17.1. So if we go into a song here, we'll have this little star. We can tap on it and add it to favorites with a nice little animation, tap the three dots and you'll see we can undo the favorite as well from here. Now, if we go into our playlists under library, you'll see our playlists. We're already under it under the three bar menu in the upper right. We can go to favorite it. Now it will sort by what's been favorited. So that's something they've added. So if you go into that, you'll see it here along with the option to change the album artwork here as well. So if we go to our options, go to edit, we can change the album artwork to whatever we'd like. You'll see here with this option where we can add our own photo. In some cases you can add even more than that. So if we go back and change it to all of our playlists, scroll down even more, let's go to this one, my mix playlist again, go to edit. We have the option for new album artwork that it creates it's itself with different options with maybe an album, maybe some options for different music levels and much more. So these are things that it suggests all on its own that they've added to work automatically. You can use what it chooses on its own or just pick one of your own. Also, if we scroll down to the bottom of a playlist, 
you'll see that it has song suggestions now. So we have our song suggestions, featured artists, and that's something that updates within all of the playlists where we can quickly add those songs if we want to. So all of those things have been added to music to sort of match what we're listening to and matches the vibe of your playlist according to Apple with that new album artwork at the top. Something else they've updated has to do with the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max and that has to do with the action button. When it's in your pocket, they don't call this out specifically, but when it's in your pocket, it won't respond as quickly to whatever you've set up the action button for. So I have mine set up for a flashlight. I have found that it takes holding it a little bit longer to activate it if it's in your pocket it or it thinks that it's not in use. So that's something that they've made. It's just harder to actually get it to activate now when it's in your pocket or somewhere else. Also within podcasts, if we go under library and maybe we have something that's downloaded, we can quickly remove it now by sliding and we have a new remove download button. So they've updated this just a little bit to make it a little bit easier to do. Additionally, if we go in and maybe add a new wallpaper, so we'll add one here scroll down maybe to photo shuffle under photo shuffle we now have the option for our own album so we can switch between favorites or something else that's been added in 17.1 they've also added support for something else within home so within home we now have home key support for matter accessories that use locks so if you have a matter supporting lock it now will work within the home kit app or home app Additionally, they've improved some things here as well with bug fixes. If we go under settings and if you're using screen time within screen time, they've updated this so that it now syncs more properly across devices. The reliability of that was a little bit questionable. Now that's been fixed. They've also fixed an issue that has to do with significant location privacy. It would reset sometimes when you transfer it to Apple watch or pair it for the first time. That's something that's been updated where it shouldn't reset the settings that you have under privacy and your significant locations under location services. So if you scroll to the bottom, go to system services, you'll see all of these different ones with significant locations as well. That will all stay the same way. Even after syncing an Apple watch. Now Apple says they've resolved an issue where the names of incoming callers, when you're on a phone call, sometimes wouldn't show the names properly. That should be fixed with this update. However, I've seen this issue occur just in messages and other places as well. So hopefully it resolves it across the whole OS. We'll have to wait and see though. They've also resolved an issue with the keyboard. Many people were complaining that the keyboard was unresponsive. The keyboard seems nice and fast now. And when you're typing, it seems to be just like you would expect instead of sometimes being really slow and stuttering. So that's been fixed and they specifically mention it, which is great. They've also fixed an issue where crash detection has been optimized. So again, they're optimizing crash detection, which is something that you have on certain phones, 14 pro max, 15 pro max with crash detection under emergency SOS. So if you have that and you've been in an accident, it should be better optimized and won't trigger. Maybe if you're on a ski slope or something else. Also something that is great to hear is they've fixed an issue that could cause display images to persist. This can be known as ghosting where it would show on your display. You'd turn your display off and sometimes you'd see the image in the background or it would just cause that altogether. I heard of this on early iPhone 15 devices and thought it seems a bit early for that. And it seems it was software all along. So that should fix this issue. Also another issue they don't call out specifically, but should be fixed is with iPhone 12 users in France. If you have an iPhone 12 in France, this update should fix the issue where the RF radiation was a bit too strong when you weren't using the device and maybe it was set down on a surface. So if it was set down, sometimes it was just too strong and wasn't within the specs that France allows that should be fixed in this update. However, they don't call that out specifically. Apple today announced a new Apple pencil with USB C that's less expensive at $79. It also will attach magnetically to iPads and has USB-C charging at the top. So it looks like you'll be able to slide the top of the pencil up and it will support USB-C charging. So that will be available in early November for $79. Apple did not announce new iPads today, but the compatibility is added with iPad OS 17.1. So we'll see that in a few weeks when it releases to the public. Now, Apple did not mention anything specifically about people having Wi-Fi issues or maybe the black screen or a reboot problem at night. They didn't address that specifically, but hopefully it includes those fixes. We'll only know after testing this for a few days. Also, the notification bug is still there, so they definitely haven't fixed that yet where it sort of just jumps in and 
The major issue was the alarms not going off if the phone rebooted or just in general. So hopefully they've fixed all of this with the alarms and it's working properly. But again, it will take a few days to know that. As far as performance, performance seems to be the same or faster thanks to the smoothness of when you're typing and just scrolling with ProMotion seems to be nice and fast. I've noticed no change here whatsoever and going in and out of apps, whether that's on an iPhone 11 or the iPhone 15 Pro Max, things seem to be nice and fast. In fact, I posted on Twitter or X the other day that my iPad seemed to speed up on its own with super fast animations and it felt like it was incredibly fast. So hopefully Apple's updated this a little bit to make it feel a little bit quicker, but they've fixed that issue with the keyboard and performance seems to be about what you would expect. As far as the heat of the device, well, installing a major update will heat the phone up quite a bit. It is a little bit warm still to the touch, but I thought we'd talk about benchmarks in a moment, but I'll give it a minute to cool down as well. As far as battery life, well, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have now, but it does take a few days to measure that. And we'll talk about that on the weekend after we've tested it for a little while, but you'll see I'm at 100% capacity on the 15 pro max. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cycles under general and about, and you'll see we have 17 cycles since the release of this iPhone. So at first there were quite a lot. Now that I've installed Chrome at the bottom, it seems to be a little bit better. Safari was using a lot of power. So I'll try and put Safari back now and I actually blocked it using screen time. So hopefully it will resolve the issue. I'll put it back in a little bit and see if the battery issues went away, but it seemed to get much better after I actually removed that and just put Chrome, which is essentially Safari anyway, but it was doing a lot in the background. As far as the last few days though, yesterday I had three hours and 24 minutes of screen active time, five hours and 23 minutes of screen idle time and used about 70% of the battery. The day before was even better four hours and 41 minutes of screen active time and used about 75%. It's been getting a lot better since I removed Safari and it seems to be increasing as far as battery life. Again, hopefully iOS 17.1 resolves that. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.1 RC, you definitely could do that now is this should be the final version unless they find additional bugs, which we could have an RC to toward the end of the week. But at this point, it seems pretty safe to try out if you want to, but again, we could have another update and then hopefully we'll see the final release on Monday. Apple's not said specifically, but Monday or Tuesday is what we would expect. Typically they release these major updates on a Monday, but we could see it before Wednesday of next week. Usually that's what we see. So until we know for sure, of course, I'll let you know on the weekend if we know by then. As far as overall benchmarks, well, let's go ahead and take a look at those. I'll run those here with Geekbench 6 and see what we get. So we'll give it just a moment. We had pretty good scores before. Let me go ahead and run that. Benchmarks completed and we have 2,879 for single core, 7,179 for multi-core. That's actually better than what we had before, which is a bit surprising since it just reinstalled the whole OS and it's much better even though it's a little bit warmer. So this could increase a little bit over the next few days. Of course, I'll use this for the next week or so until we have the final release and we'll talk about what the experience is like this weekend with the regular follow-up with battery life, performance, and more. If I find anything else as far as features I'll let you know in that follow-up video as well. And if you find anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.